For over 300 years, witchcraft was deemed a criminal offence. All around the globe, people, mainly women, were being arrested, trailed and executed for acts of witchcraft and sorcery. In Europe alone, over 100,000 people were executed. To be deemed a witch by the government or even your neighbours was a lot easier than you may think. Women were mainly targeted for simple things such as living alone at an old age, mixing herbs for health benefits, or even just by word of mouth. In the early 1600s, three notorious women were brought to trial for suspicion of causing death to the Earl of Rutland's two young sons by acts of witchcraft. A mother, Joanne Flower, and her two daughters, Philippa and Margaret Flower, were employed by the Manners family who lived in Belvoir Castle in Leicestershire. This is the witchcraft tomb at St Mary's Church in Bottisford. It was commissioned by Francis Manners, the 6th Earl of Rutland, before his death in 1632. The inscription refers to events that took place in the early 17th century, culminating in the execution of two sisters, Margaret and Philippa Flower, in 1619. Frances, his first wife, is dressed in Elizabethan style, but sadly she died in 1605 of smallpox. 1612-1613 was an eventful year at the Manners household. They had several deaths in the family. 1612, Roger, the fifth Earl, died. Frances inherited the title from him in 1612. In 1613, Henry, the eldest of Francis' two sons, or his eldest son and heir, died, and also Oliver, the sixth Earl's brother, died in 1613. Incidentally, not long after a visit to Beaver Castle, also in 1613, the heir to the throne, Henry, Prince of Wales, died. He was the eldest son of James I. The Witches of Beaver was um, Joanne Flower and her two daughters. They were servants who used to work for the Lord and the Lady of Beaver. They were dismissed, and not long after, the two sons of the Lord and Lady fell ill and died. They were instantly accused. According to the chapbook, what happens is that um, there's a dispute between servants, and um, Margaret goes to the Earl and says, tries to persuade the Earl to take her part to say, you know, stop, stop hassling me. And uh, the wife intervenes. And the, the theory is that uh, the reason that she intervenes is that Margaret's a bit too attractive and a bit too um, uh, close to the Earl. And uh, she gets, Margaret gets the sack and she's literally given the sack, she's actually given a bolster, a bedspread, as part of her compensation package. And um, shortly afterwards, the children start having these strange fits, and the Earl becomes convinced that they're, they're being attacked, attacked by witchcraft. The three women were arrested at Christmas in 1619 and kept in a dungeon for five weeks where they were examined. They were all later taken to Lincoln Prison, where they would be trialled. On the way to Lincoln, the mother Joanne asked for bread. She said that if the bread could not be swallowed, then she is guilty. She was said to have choked on the bread and dropped dead instantly. Later, the two daughters confessed to murder caused by witchcraft and were sentenced to death. There are many different tales to the story. There are many people who believe the Flower family was set up and many who believe they were evil. There is still a stigma in today's society about whether witches do have powers or not. Chelsea Bergen is a modern day witch. We spoke to her to find out more about the beliefs and practices of witches. My name is Chelsea Bergen, I'm 21 years old, I'm a media student at Brooksby Mountain College and I'm a Wiccan. I can cast spells, I pray to a lord and lady. I believe in a lord and lady, so a male and female god. I started on my Wiccan path when I was about 17. I was going through a phase of wanting to find a path in my life and um, I went to a fair at my local college 
or um, religion. I looked through all of them and none were really standing out. And then I remembered that I had this book called The Green Witch Yearbook. I read through it and it just felt like something clicked, just a, a puzzle piece falling into place. The witch trials were a dark age, I think, an age of where superstition was very strong and the women who were put on trial, and I think there were a few men, quite a few men as well who were placed on trial, it was, they were misunderstood. These women had knowledge of easing pain through labour, they knew how to cure a toothache, and at the time, medical practice wasn't as advanced as it was, so for these women who had next to nothing, because they were essentially poor women, uh, it, to those who were in higher power, it was like a, oh my gosh, how were these women able to do it? They were just basically afraid of what they didn't know. To me, it is kind of a sad tale and a tale of deception from what I've heard about it. Um, I dare say that if, for now, how we say that the women placed this curse upon this family because they were apparently dismissed, um, it, so it was a sort of a revenge story. I think in about 10 years' time, it might be that we're told, actually, these women were framed for it by, some, by somebody else because... They were very much easy to frame. Once the two sons were dead, whoever married the third daughter would be entitled to the land, the castle, everything that Beaver Castle had to offer. And at the time, it was a very rich sort of land. In 1735, the British Parliament passed a law forbidding the trial and execution of witchcraft. A new law brought in meant that if a suspected witch was trialled, they were given a maximum one year imprisonment instead of execution. The last person to be executed for witchcraft was a woman called Temperance Lloyd in 1684. Although witch trials were no longer allowed, the public was still superstitious. Even governments in the 1900s were still conscious of witches.